Hey folks, it's early days for Starfield, and I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon like most and try to benchmark this game and see how it runs. Now, of course, I'm not a professional outlet with tons of GPUs, although I do have quite a number of them. So, while not all of them are included in this list, I tried to include as many as I could. Although, I gotta get this video out at some point, so I didn't include literally everything because I didn't want to go making a complete mess of my household. Now, I've done my benchmark run here in New Atlantis, which at least at first seemed like it was the most intensive part, although there are some more intensive spots than this. This is in the Mast District, and I just decided to pick here because it was a more consistent run-to-run -run kind of a benchmark pass that I could do and it would work on all of my tested GPUs. Of course, I've got several cards here, ranging from a bunch of Radeons and GeForce cards to even Intel Arc as of the 4th of September, which I did all my testing for Arc. They did release a driver on the 3rd, and that does at least allow the cards to start the game, which I will give Intel some credit for. But yeah, I got a bunch of different GPUs here, and some of them include my RX 7900 XT, the A770, the 6700 XT, the 1650 Super, 6650 XT, the 6500 XT, and the 8GB 6500 XT, amongst some others, as you might be able to see. So, without further ado, let's talk about what we're going to be testing this on, and we'll get right into the data. My computer for testing is updated to AM5, and I have a Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPU paired with 32 gigs of DDR5 5600 mega transfers per second memory, and we're using Windows 11 with the, uh, I think it's the August cumulative update because that's the newest one that's not a preview update as of the making of this video. For GPU drivers, I tested the latest NVIDIA one as well as the latest AMD one, and of course the latest Intel one as of again today at the making of this video. So, obviously I'll put those in a text blurb as to which drivers I used, and without further ado, let's jump in. So, starting out, we have 1080p at low. I did test medium and high, but, well, obviously I didn't test ultra because that seemed kind of pointless. And I made sure that FSR was off as well as VRS were applicable. As you can see, most of the cards on the list were sub-60 FPS, which is quite underwhelming. I mean, there are obviously some cards above it, like my 7900 XT, but that's just kind of there for a point of reference. Uh, the 6650 XT, I was surprised was that high up on the list, truthfully, and how it was pretty well trailing behind the 6700 XT, so that really is a surprise. Uh, what's not a surprise is are the Intel cards, because those have some horrible stuttering issues at this setting. I don't know why, but the A770 avoided it. The A750 and A380 had some nasty stuttering problems, and it would always result in some random half-second-long stutter at some random point. They had some work to do with the drivers, let's just put it that way. Although, I will say, I'm surprised that the 980 Ti was able to keep up above 30 FPS, at least on average. And for those wondering, that's my Ultimate XP GPU. It is a super overclocked 980 Ti. It's the EVGA Classified Edition, so I guess that has something to account for here. But again, this is not a support card. I just threw that in there for fun. But yeah, everything else, not really great. It's not off to a good start here. When we move up to the medium preset, things just start to take a little bit more of a turn for the worse. All the cards that were up in the 70 FPS range are most definitely not anymore. And for some reason, again, the 6700 XT should be scaling a little better than it is, but it's not, so that's kind of odd. Uh, again, honorable mention is going to the 5700 XT and the 6650 XT. Those are actually quite high up on the stack, at least higher than I'd expect. So, good on them. 2080 Super is just not doing so good. Like, that should be in that higher FPS territory, but it's not. So, that's kind of odd. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, everything else is just 40 FPS average and below, which is quite disappointing. Although, the A750, I think that's just a testing anomaly, but I was still having nasty stuttering problems with the A750 at this setting. I'm not sure what was going on. I'm going to get... I'm going to just guess that's down to testing error, or maybe that's just, again, due to the driver being pre-release status. So it probably is what it is. All the four gigabyte GPUs had issues trying to even get above cinematic frame rate territory, minus the 1650 Super, which is odd. I'm not sure how that was able to pull through, maybe because it has a by 16 interface. I have no clue, truthfully. But yeah, all the other 4 gigabyte and 6 gigabyte GPUs at this point were below 30 FPS, and so I cut them off from continuing uh, higher presets because it was only going to get worse, and I, I didn't want to waste my time entirely. And so, yeah, it just goes to show the 6500 XT 8 gigabyte absolutely wipes the floor of the 4 gigabyte, which is hilarious that AMD didn't offer a uh, 8 gigabyte version of the card officially. So, good on you, Sapphire. You saved the 6500 XT for at least me. So, <laughs> moving on. 
At the high preset, well, it just gets worse because all the 4GB cards ran so unsatisfactorily or I ran out of time testing that I just didn't bother and so that's why there's a bunch of zeros there. Same goes for the 6GB GPUs and the A750 because that also ran pretty poorly and unplayably so I just decided it wasn't worth my time. All the other cards as you can see were not great either and all but my main GPU were below 60fps here so Bethesda's definitely got some work to do. So one honorable mention again goes to the 6500 XT, 8 gigabyte, because somehow that is playable, and I genuinely am impressed by that. Um, the 1080 Ti was above 30 FPS by some Christmas miracle, and once again, the 2080 Super should be a little higher than it is. I'm not sure why it's that low down the stack, but I guess it can't win them all anymore. And the 1070 Ti seems to be hanging in by a thread. Again, that's the minimum GPU for those paying attention. And I don't expect that most people with a 1070 Ti, or even for that matter, a 1080 or 1080 Ti are going to play at the high preset at 1080p, just because at least right now the optimization sucks. Maybe in time, if it gets better, that might actually improve. We'll have to see. But yeah, it's all cinematic territory at this preset for most cards. And so Ultra just does not make sense unless you have a current gen GPU that's as high end as mine is, which even then that doesn't make sense. Let's move on to 1440p briefly. So everything got a run at 1440p with the low preset, and it's just disappointing as hell. Like, as you can see, most everything didn't even hit 60 FPS, bar the 3070 and 6700 XT on average, which I guess for the 4 gigabyte GPUs, I'm not surprised, because again, those are probably running out of VRAM, and while the frame times are good, it wasn't amazing. Surprisingly, the A750 was more consistent here than it was at 1080p. So, like I said, Intel's got some driver work to do, and that's not a surprise because, they, like I said, it's a pre-release driver. One honorable mention here is the 1650 Super. I'm surprised that was above 24 FPS, so I guess the frame uh, buffer size here doesn't really affect it all that much or something. And again, the 6500 XT managed to pull through above 30 FPS on average, which is quite hilarious compared to the 4 gigabyte version, which was struggling. <laughs> so there's that. Another honorable mention is the minimum spec GPU. The 1070 Ti managed to stick right alongside the 6500 XT, like almost verbatim. It's impressive. So good job, 1070 Ti. You're hanging in there pretty good. And yeah, everything else is just kind of mid at best. And then, like I mentioned before, all the 4 gigabyte cards and 6 gigabyte cards, for the most part, couldn't really go above certain presets, so I just didn't even bother wasting my time with those, hence the zeros, so don't mind those on the graph. So, yeah, again, same thing as 1080p at high, pretty much nothing hit 60 FPS here, which is kind of disappointing, and, well, I'm not going to waste too much more time on this. I will mention the 6500 XT and the 1070 Ti, again, they're fairly close together to each other, which really surprises me, and... The A770 is able to stick it up here on this chart all right, although it's not amazing, but it's at least somewhat passable. So let's just get the chart for high out of the way, and then we can wrap this up. And as you can see, it's pretty slim pickings here at 1440p high. Most of the stack here just did not run it acceptably. So, you know, goodbye 1070 Ti and 1080, which that's not a surprise. I didn't think that those were going to work that well anyway, as well as the A758 gig. That just, ugh, that didn't really work out too good. A shocker, though, I left this in mainly for memes, but the 6500 XT 8GB's got quite the capable little piece of silicon, I guess, at this setting. So it really makes you wonder, why didn't AMD just give it 8GB of VRAM? Was it really that expensive to do? I don't know. Either way, everything's just meh at best here, so I guess we'll just wrap up this video. So I'm sure as time goes on, it's only going to get better. There's going to be better drivers, there's going to be game patches that are going to fix the issues, and it's just going to be on the up and up from here on out, assuming that Bethesda stays committed to it, which I imagine they will, because this is a pretty major release for them, as they've mentioned. And it is quite an impressive game. So I would think they'd want to polish what they have and make it better. So maybe in the future, if this does improve, I might run through these again, although it won't be on my 7800X3D computer, but... We'll see how the 5900X machine of mine that I'm trying to get going again will perform. I actually want to get back into doing some of this uh, benchmarking stuff, so we'll see. But with that, that's pretty much it for this video, as I just wanted to make something quick to test out Starfield. So hopefully you like what you saw. And if you did, you can click the thumbs up down below and get subscribed because I do upload rather infrequently. But with that, I'm out of here. So thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.